So let's solve an equation using our newfound powers. Here we have a linear combination of sine and cosine. Negative 2 cosine x plus 3 sine x equal to 2. To solve this problem, we're going to take advantage of our new formula and convert our linear combination to a single cosine. So here we're going to find our amplitude a, which is the square root of b squared plus c squared. So a is going to be the square root of negative 2 squared plus 3 squared, which turns out to be the square root of 13. And our d value will be the arctangent of c over b, or 3 over negative 2. But notice that since we're using the variable x, and our answers need to be between negative 2 pi and 2 pi, we need to be in radian mode. So before we actually calculate the arctangent or inverse tangent of 3 over negative 2, we're going to make sure we're in radian mode. Let's pull out our calculator and ask for the inverse tangent of 3 divided by negative 2. But before we actually ask for it, let's make sure Oh, we're in degree mode. Change it to radians. Here we go. The inverse tangent of 3 over negative 2 gives me negative 0.98279. So our d value is negative 0.98279 plus 180n. And we have to decide whether n is going to be 0 or we need to translate and find our new angle in another quadrant. So we draw our reference triangle, which has an adjacent side of negative 2 and an opposite side of 3, putting us in the second quadrant. Here is what my d value should be, according to my coefficients. And the d value, or inverse tangent value, we got out of the calculator was negative 0.98279 radians. Well, negative 0.9827 radians would put us in the fourth quadrant, which is clearly the wrong quadrant for our reference triangle. So we need to add one half revolution. And actually, instead of 180n, we need to worry, add pi n one half revolution in radians. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add pi to negative 0.98279. Pull out the calculator again. We're going to take our answer and add pi. And we get 2.1588 as our true phase displacement. So our value for d is going to be 2.1588. And our equation can be rewritten as the square root of 13 times the cosine of x minus 2.1588. And that should be equal to 2. Because we just replaced our linear combination with a single cosine with a phase displacement. Once we've gotten to that step, we can go through and solve just like we've solved any of these trigonometric equations in the past. So we start by dividing by root 13. So we have cosine of x minus 2.1588 is equal to 2 over root 13. And then we take the arc cosine of both sides. So x minus 2.1588 is equal to the arc cosine of 2 over rad 13. We replace the arc cosine with its definition. So x minus 2.1588 is equal to plus or minus the inverse cosine of 2 over rad 13 plus 
2 pi n since we're in radian mode. Now from here we separate our two possible branches of solutions, the positive and the negative, and write two sets of equations. So x minus 2.1588 could equal the positive inverse cosine of 2 over rad 13 plus 2 pi n, or x minus 2.1588 could equal the negative inverse cosine of 2 over rad 13 plus 2 pi n. Running out of room here. Now we just need to know what that value is for the inverse cosine of 2 over rad 13. So naturally, we pull out our calculator again. So the inverse cosine of 2 divided by rad 13 is 0.98279. So we'll take that value and replace our inverse cosine expression with 0.98279. So we have x minus 2.1588 equals 0.98279 plus 2 pi n, or x minus 2.1588 equals negative. 0.98279 plus 2 pi n. We transfer the 2.1588 over to the right-hand side of the equation. Once again, we go to our calculator, and we'll take the 0.98279, and we'll add the 2.1588, which we have right here. And we get 3.14159. So our first answer off the positive branch is a value for x of 3.14159, or pi. Our answer off the negative branch would mean we would have to take the negative of 0.98287 and add our 2.1587 and get 1.176005. So our initial positive solution would be x is equal to 3.1587 four one five nine plus two pi n and our initial negative solution would be x is equal to one point one seven six zero plus two pi n. Now our domain restriction for our solutions is that x needs to be between negative two pi and positive two pi. So, both of these answers are part of my solution. So, if n equals 0, I have a solution, 3.14159. If n equals 1, if I add 2 pi to pi, I am outside of my domain restrictions. So, n equals 1 doesn't work. But if n equals negative 1, and I subtract 2 pi, then x will be negative 3.14159, which is within our domain restrictions of negative 2 pi to pi. If n equals negative 2, I'm again outside of my restricted domain. <clears throat> For our negative branch, if n equals 0, then I have a solution. x is 1.1760, which is between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. If I add 2 pi and I let n equal 1, no solution, because I'm adding a positive number to 2 pi. 
if n equals negative 1, I should still be within my domain. Let's subtract 2 pi from our initial solution of 1.176. So let's take that 1.176 and subtract 2 pi. And we get negative 5.107 as another solution. So x equals negative 5.107 is another solution. If n equals negative 2, I'm subtracting 4 pi, and that will take me out of my restricted domain. So I have a solution at 3.14159, negative 3.14159, 1.1760, and negative 5.1. One zero seven. And there are four solutions. So let's recap. How can we relate a linear combination of a sine and cosine function of equal periods to a single cosine function with a phase displacement? Well, we use our formula. B cosine x plus C sine x equals A cosine of x minus D. Where our new amplitude comes from squaring the amplitudes of the original two sinusoids, adding them together and taking the square root. And our new phase displacement comes from taking the arctangent of the amplitude of our sine function divided by the amplitude of our cosine function. The quadrant for our phase displacement comes from the arctangent of C over B and depends on the signs of B and C and may be determined by sketching D in standard position. The hypotenuse of our reference triangle is A. So that's how we can demonstrate the relationship between the constants in the relationship graphically. We draw a reference triangle where the adjacent side of our reference triangle is the amplitude of our cosine fun function, the opposite is the amplitude of our sine function, and we get the new amplitude from the hypotenuse and the phase displacement from the interior or the angle that creates our reference triangle. Why does the calculation of the phase displacement require more thought than a simple request from the calculator? Well, because our calculator gives us the inverse tangent of the ratio, but that only gives us answers in the first and fourth quadrant, and our reference triangle may be located in the second or third quadrants. What is the composite argument for cosine of A minus B? Well, that relationship or argument property is right here. The cosine of A minus B equals the cosine of A times the cosine of B plus the sine of A times the sine of B. And finally, how can this relationship help us solve certain equations algebraically? Well, by converting a linear combination into a single combination, or a single cosine with a phase displacement, we can then take advantage of the arc cosine definition and solve our problems, as we saw.